Check one, two. Check one, two. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you. Good to be back. It's a twofer. Adler in the morning. Cross in the afternoon. Lock the cross joins us. 957 Cruise FM in Edmonton. He's the host. Again, our worlds have yet to collide. The rock. The Probably a good room. thing, though. What do you mean? Why our worlds? The what Adler cross worlds. You mean radio? Like our old radio lives? No, no. no I mean, you don't put me on with Adler. No, never. No. Okay. It's a good thing. It's yeah. a good thing. And I, I, I appreciate Adler for what he is. I just don't know if he could. I know him. I know Charles. I don't think, I don't think the two of us would coexist well together. I don't believe you would either. Beer with them. That's why you have been on the show. No, you, would you have a beer with him? I'm sure you uh, have absolutely. a beer with anybody. He's a great guy, but like you are. I am the antithesis of what he thinks broadcasting is. You're the opposite of Charles. <laughs> that's why i use the word antithesis both legend thank you yes both legendary both legendary radio guys charles has an emmy to his name he did a nationally syndicated show for 30 years he's kind of the gold standard when it comes to syndicated broadcasting you have been crushing it in western canada for the last 30 years not a lot of guys can be able to say that you're an acquired crushing. taste he's a political animal you think politics are all ridiculous and you think we need all new people which i don't disagree with you on it uh, he helps me see the forest through the trees. You like to get emotional over little things like 15 minute cities and stuff like that. So yeah, you're very different people. So that's very why different. I don't put you guys together. Cause when Please I want to tell me he's salient... not pro 15 minute city. No, I'm pro 15 minute city. I don't want to start with that. I, I, I can't do that today. Uh, uh, anyway, both legendary radio guys with just legendary radio people that do legendary things after they get, I off am the not radio. offended by the fact that you refuse to put us on together. I'm okay with it. No, I'm 100% because I am more concerned for me. I, I like, I would be so uncomfortable if you yeah. and Charles were on the same podcast. It'd be like matter of time before Charles gives it to Lachlan matter of time before Lachlan gets upset, gives it back to Charles matter of time before I'm sitting here twiddling well, my thumbs 15 minutes into an hour long podcast with no guests and no co-hosts. So that's why I don't here's do the, here's the thing too, right? Like I would probably go out of my way to get a rise out of Charles. Well, it, absolutely. And I would, would go out of his way to do the same thing because he's way smarter than both of us. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. wanted to point it out. He wouldn't buy he wouldn't I'm buy very it. creative with how I upset smart people though. <laughs> Kate, can I can I bring something up very ironic? Radio related? No. Well, kind of. Yes. So, yesterday, we're on the podcast. I had my Rush Suck shirt on. Yeah. You bring it up. We have a conversation about Rush. We have a conversation about Alex Lifeson. Yeah. You tell a story about how you played nine holes with him and didn't know who he was. Four before he clued me in. Yeah. He knew who I was. I'm like, I don't know. What are you, some band? He was, yeah, which, a band. I'm like, which like by the way, band. is one of my Rush. favorite stories. That and the Tommy Lee story yeah. where Tommy Lee made you show his, his dick. wiener. Yeah, yeah. I showed him my wiener. Yeah. Anyway, so as soon as I get off the podcast with you, mm hmm I'm getting ready for my uh, my radio show here that I do in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, you know, on 95.7 Cruise FM. Yeah, and I'm going through some news, some websites that I look at, and I see this story about the CFNY, the Spirit of Radio, which is the Rush song written about the Edge, the Spirit of Radio documentary mm -hmm. that is in the middle of being worked on. This is a note from Alan. Oh, you got it up. Yeah. Okay, okay there it is. So, go ahead and read it. Go ahead and read it. This is this is new to me. We just mentioned this yesterday. Um, <laughs> this is a note from the gentleman who is curating the documentary about CFNY where I worked for 14 years, I think. I think 14 years. Doing the morning show, number one in Toronto for at least 10 of them. We had a 40 share. The longest serving in the biggest morning show in the history of this legendary radio station. Which it so, is. Yeah. And and it and and I mean, it's been around for a long time. Yeah. You were a big part of the story of the edge, CFNY. Yes. And it's so I sent this I to you. you. Say, I think you could say redefined, right? I think you could say I redefined the space. I would suggest that you played a large part in why people know about CFNY. Yeah. Um, and uh, across I, Canada, for good or bad. Yes. 
And I said, yeah, for good or bad. Mm -hmm. And some might say good and some might say bad. Sure. Let's just say you were responsible for responding to complaints about your show. Uh, record setting complaints. Yeah. Record setting adjudications and complaints. That most guy might history. suggest that you were a bad part of the history of this. <laughs> so anyway, I send you a note and I'm like, this is kind of cool. When are we going to see you on this? And you're like, I, this is the first time hearing of it. I'm like, what? <laughs> How do you have a documentary? <laughs> you know what? I hope, uh, I hope Todd's on it. I hope they interview. <laughs> well, it's if good I see one of your I, interns. You sent this to me yesterday. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There'll be interns in there for sure. You oh sent this God. to me yesterday, and I'm like, wait a second. There's a documentary about a radio station I effectively own for the better part of a quarter century, <laughs> and I'm just hearing about it. And and I, and I, I read it today, actually, just before we came on. It's CF update on the CFNY documentary, largely known in Toronto as The Edge. 102.1 The Edge. I was, came there in 2000, left in 2015 under a hail of accusations that were all untrue. Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. It, it, great run. We were number one forever. We redefined moorings in the city. Happy you to did. have gotten in out. The country. In, in the, the country. In the country, Dean. Yeah. I, I mean, you're not good at, uh, at uh, taking... Se well, you're decent at that. <laughs> so... Anyway, this was the biggest you are humble. in the country. You, Thank you. You're more humble now than I I I remember you being when you were <laughs> Fat Dean. When I was I don't remember <laughs> Fat Dean being very humble. <laughs> so we redefined uh mornings in Canada for a long period of time. Anyway, 2015 it all ended. Doesn't matter. Who cares why? Um so bottom line is we were contentious, we were controversial. They're doing a documentary, it seems like, on this radio station's history. Rush wrote a song about it, really put them on the map years and years and years ago, called The Spirit of Radio. That's what they called The Edge back then, and that's why they penned the song, Spirit of Radio. So color me shocked to find out not only are they doing a documentary on this radio station, but according to Alan, who was my boss for a short period of time, and he was fucking hilarious. How'd that um, go? Oh, terrible. He's awful. Anyway, but that good person, just terrible at managing people, and he's scared of his own shadow, and he shakes a lot. Anyway, that's another whole story. So I find out he's got this, as you sent it to me, this update on this documentary. I have no idea. I, you'd imagine the biggest morning show in the history of the station would be part of that documentary, but I, first I've heard about Dean, it. Dean, you're one of the, you were on one of the biggest morning shows in the history of Canadian radio. Yeah. I, I'll say it. I wasn't a part of it. I was a fan and I remember listening to it every time I was in Toronto. And mm -hmm. I also remember going out of my way to find clips and tape of your show for the years that you were on the edge and, and listen, it's just, it's very funny to me that they're not including you. <laughs> Why, dude, dude and it'd be one thing if I just read that they were going to do it, they've been working on it for a year and it's done. So this, <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> He says all the necessary graphics will be delivered by March 1st. We're doing animations, too. Uh, unless I'm in animation. Sound mix has started. The final piece of the score has arrived. Color correction begins March 8th. Final cut of the film should be ready March 31st. I'm hoping for an official trailer sometime after that. A premiere is TBA. Um, this will be, if I'm going to telegraph this, this will be Alan Cross's homage to Alan Cross. That's what this will be. It'll include a bunch of people that worked there that had questionable experiences with younger folks back in the 70s and 80s. Uh, you'll hear names like Live Earl Jive. You'll hear names like Alan Cross. Uh, they'll pimp the death of Martin Streak. They will talk about the Rush song. Then it'll be a whole bunch more stuff about Alan Cross. People Alan Cross has interviewed. People Alan Cross. It'll be narrated by Alan Cross. That's how Alan does stuff. It's kind of the bottom line. So the mm. fact that I don't know about it is no, I, I feel no shame. I feel I'm not sad. I don't care. Good for them. I think it's awesome. That was a nice part of my life that gave me all kinds of wonderful things today. And I really appreciate it. But if, even if they called me and said, we need your help with this documentary, I would say thank you, but no, thank you. I am not interested you in sure? reliving. Oh, hundred percent. Reliving yeah, okay. or relitigating 
15 years of very serious work that I took very seriously and did a very good job of that was largely underappreciated, unless you looked at my paychecks. Mm, they were pretty big. So I, I, it's, it's time gone by. It doesn't matter to me. What are we reliving? We we're talking about the birth of a radio station. Sure. Great. Let's let's do the history of toothpicks while we're at it. Like no one cares. Uh, radio is, ah. is no, they don't. dude. They don't. And it, it, it'll be a little bit self-serving, but I think a lot of people very. in the broadcast industry will be intrigued by by what Alan does. Take take the Alan thing out of it. Alan, yeah. Alan. If you take that out of out of it, my uncle. Yeah. Um. And 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 you know if they do talk about me, here's the thing: they will use it as a way to paint me as someone who they begrudgingly paid millions of dollars to over 15 years. Like, like I, like I was twisting their arm to pay me that money and get them those ratings. That's exactly what they'll do. And that's fine. That's their prerogative. I could care less because I don't control that stuff. Right. It doesn't matter to me. Well, we that's all know. They, well, that's we how all they know. look at it now. These are the stories that come out of that building now is like, Oh, he was really tough to work with. And you go for 15 years. <laughs> like, yeah. Is it that hard to work with that you gave them hundreds of thousands of dollars more every year to do that job, to get those ratings, to get you that 40 share, to be number one in the city for 15 years? Is it there? So it's like, you know, it's revisionist history. And, you know, is the radio station that important to music? Is any radio station important to me? No, no, no radio stations important to music. You know, back in the day, you used to go to radio parties, you'd have your favorite radio station. But, it's just time gone by. It's like, you know, is there anything nostalgic about a brand anymore? Not really. I mean, you know, sure. Back in the day, guys like Martin Streak, maybe some nostalgia with like, you know, Club 102 with Cameron Diaz would come and show up and party with everybody for the weekend. That was kind of cool. Right. You know, sure. It, it affords you some great relationships being involved in media and radio. But man, oh, man. I mean, you know, there's nothing there anymore. And whatever that was served in a time when, you know, that industry itself was not a particularly moral industry. So if they're going to do a documentary about CFNY, they need to do a documentary about the people that had to leave this country because they're on the run from the law for doing all kinds of things. They should do a documentary about the drugs. They should do a documentary about some of the questionable things that went on in that little yellow house in Brampton. Like if, if Alan Cross is really serious about getting into the history of CFNY and the spirit of radio, he should include all of it, like what that industry does to human beings, like Martin Street, who's no longer with us. So it'll be a glossy sort of like homage to Alan and himself, yeah. and they'll cherry pick those little parts. That is why I would not want to be in that documentary, because those things are so fucking self-serving after the fact. And Alan's at that point of his life where he's like, he's got a couple cool little brands. He's, you know, he's involved at, at, at Chorus, which is the radio station that runs, you know, The Edge, which they're doing this thing in, in Q107, which has gone through this terrible, uh, you know, rebirth or whatever since Darren's left. But here's the thing is that, you know, as, as great as and I'm still bullish on radio. It's such a self-serving project that and, and radio is so behind the eight ball when it comes to like any desirability as an industry at all. How many people are gonna fucking watch it? Like I will. I want to see what it? they say about oh, you. Oh, you want to? <laughs> you know what? We uh, all know that the success of the Edge, CFNY in Toronto, was because of the music mix. <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story. So I told him that for the first. It was time. how they put Blink One Eighty Two and Weezer into one another. Yeah, you guys are going to play some Catherine Wheel this morning. Our ratings are going to go through the roof. Or I'll just scrap all the music and talk, and we'll get real ratings. That's when the ratings took off is when they're like. And so the only rule, there's a Dean rule at the edge towards the end of my time there. And it was because I, I used to scream at these people all the time. Listen, no one's coming here to listen to Marcy Playground anymore. No one cares. Sex and Candy. Although it's Sex over. and Candy is a jam. It's still a great tune. Yeah, I wouldn't mind listening to it if I had needed a pee break, too. I said, people come here for the hijinks. They come here for the content, the entertainment. And if you don't stay with it. So anyway, our ratings would go up the less music we would play. So finally, we were number one with like a 40 share. And I wasn't playing any songs. And they're like, okay, new rule. This is called the Dean rule. Just get the commercials in before 10 o'clock. We don't really care about anything else. You can say and do whatever else you like. No music, some music, some, just get the commercials in. And there was one day where I played 30 minutes of commercials prior to the end of the show because I motored through five breaks. 
anyway, when you're successful, is what you can do. But they can also fire you. There you go. That was my that was my linchpin. But who cares? Good for them. Hope it's a nice documentary. You're only going to watch it to see if I'm in it. You're not going to watch it because you're overly interested in this radio station that was born in Brampton in 1977, dude. Okay, so for me, I I will be honest, and and maybe this says more about who I am than um than anyone wants to know. But if I was in your shoes right now, I would be um I'd be very very upset okay. about not being involved, even considering the circumstances in which you had to depart in, in which you were forced out of the industry. Really? Yeah. You think I should be mad? I, I would be, I, I'm not trying to tell you how to react to this. I'm telling you that my nature and who I am and, and how I, how I'm wired and how I, how like I bleed for the stations that I work for. Yeah. And I, I take a lot of pride in what I do. And, um, if, if it was ignored because there, there was very interesting, sir, you were, you were a product of, of a shift in management and, and a shift in thinking in the, in the building. And so they found ways to get rid of you, which, which happens, right? It happens to, to, uh, to a lot of people. This was before they would just shut off radio stations and just fire everybody. I mean, there was always those casualties in our business, right? Yeah. If somebody comes along, they're more familiar with a different format or they're more comfortable with a different style of delivery of content. And the guy that's in there doesn't really, they just don't get it. They can't wrap their head around it. And they're also, you know, they also want to make a change because they don't want to have to deal with the the, the complaints that you brought. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So maintenance. Me yeah, that was personally, knowing your story, knowing what you went through, knowing where you are now, where you've come. Yeah. I would be very upset as an, as a person, I would be very personally hurt by not being involved, even being, being in their shit ass documentary about how it's over. Like I, I have no desire, dude. And here's the thing, right? Uh, you talk about bleeding for that radio station, the edge. That was it, man. Everything I had, I gave everything I had for 15 years. Everything. It I know you well. There was because I know how loyal you are, and I know how yeah, proud yeah. it is about what you do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, and I took it very personally. And then when the tables returned, and they paid Navigator to write articles about me to make me look like a terrible homophobic asshole, uh, and paid PR companies to sewer me in public to destroy my reputation so I'd never work against them for another radio station because that is what happened. I uh, sat down with the former HR, the VP of HR there, who literally told me that, and the former CEO, who literally told me that. Um, you don't feel like, like, and again, I, this is, goes back to the why I'm not mad. Would I feel like doing them a favor for their fucking documentary? No. No. Zero. Dude, dead to me. Okay, let me ask you. Let me ask you a serious question. Okay, yeah. and you don't have to answer it, mind right. you. You're you're more yeah. honest with me than sometimes I want you to be. Um, if you were given the chance to say no, would you feel better about finding out about this doc now? No, they're like, doing let, me, no. Okay. No, no. Even because, if they came to me and I had an opportunity to be part of a documentary uh, about that radio station, it would have to come with money, first of all. And second of all, no, I, it, it wouldn't change how I feel today. I am. It is innocuous to me. Like you might have all just told me they're doing a uh, documentary on boogers. And can you believe you're not in it because you're a nose picker, too? Like that's literally there's huh. no personal feeling for me here. There's no like upsetness there's no jealousy um you know i can read into that press release let's just go through it this is alan cross's press release about the documentary for a little more than a year now a group of us have been working on a documentary that looks at the spirit of radio a group of us if i know anything about someone that says oh a bunch of us not like this production house this movie company he's like a group of us i'm like well that's bad it's just a bunch of dumb people doing dumb shit and then they're going to have a cut for the film at March 31st, but they 
they're, they've got animations and graphics they haven't put in. The sound mix hasn't been done. There's no color correction. There's no final cut. And they don't know when they've got a, a, a premiere and they, they're hoping for an official trailer. I mean, this is this is piecemeal. This is poorly done. That's not someone that's doing a professional job of documentary. Well, I mean, so when I read that too, I'm like, oh, I'm glad they didn't ask me to be in it. That's easy because that is going to look like shit. Like, let's say, let's say you and I are on the same page. I'm yeah. Dean Blundell, and I'm I'm not going to be a part of it. I would have, because of my pettiness, I would have wanted the ability to say no to them, and I would have felt better about being able to say no than just finding out about it no now and, and so here's the thing you know what's changed for me this is a teachable moment i think a lot of people could benefit from this lock you know what changed for me over the past five I'll six take it years, into consideration years. i'll even maybe write it down all right i'm probably going to ignore it but i appreciate the fact that this might be a teachable moment for me it's a teachable moment so yeah seven eight years ago when i was drinking self-centered very involved in what i thought everybody should think about me all these other things and i realized one thing that you know over the past seven years one you can only control you can control it two that does not include your reputation never 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 right so what do you do when stuff like this happens do you look at a project like that and go I'm so, and, and your ego doesn't matter. That's the other thing. I, there is no self-importance in this answer, right? What am I going to say to people? Well, I was the most successful, longest running radio host in this city at any station. We were number, like, you, you want, I'm not going to go to someone's house and give them my resume, tell them how great I thought I was, relitigate, relive the past, because none of that matters. None of it's all owned by death. So who cares? There's that part of this. And the other part of this is that because someone didn't want me, it says more on a project like this, it says more about them than it does me. We're professional grade, right? I wouldn't have done something like that for a radio station that's doing a documentary on their own about themselves with a bunch of guys and maybe some sound coloring and maybe we'll have a premiere. I mean, super fucking low rent, number two. And here's the other thing. I cannot control what other people do. And I can only control my response to it. My response mm -hmm. to things that I don't control is to not care, literally from Jump Street. So like when I hear these things, I don't insert my own ego or self-importance into the thing that I'm missing out on. I think, thank you for saving me hours of time, not litigating whether it was, I was going to be a part of that or sitting down for that. And thank you, because I know what that industry in the real radio station of CFNY, and it is not great. Thank you for not forcing me or asking me to be a part of that because I didn't have to think about what to do. There was no deliberation. They did it for me. So I never think about those things. I only think about the things that I can control. And what I can control is the best job that I can do here every day with you and a podcast, a crier media, when it comes to recruiting, working on things like fact check, real software. I can only do the things that I am capable of doing. So those things they're all external gratifiers, right? Like, why weren't you in a documentary? Don't you want to be on TV? Don't you think you're that important? Nobody is that important, dude. Nobody. You're only as important as you are today, as you treat people. Your resume of who you are is just you today. So I'm happy to be me today. All that other stuff that I get judged on by people that don't want me in documentaries or people that have a feeling like I'm this terrible fucking person, that has nothing to do with me. That's got everything to do with them. And I am happy to allow those people to sit in their misery and judge people and act like assholes because it's got nothing to do with me, dude. I do not control it. And I think if everybody had that attitude, they'd be much fucking happier. It much does happier. sound very healthy. I would have spun on that for weeks. <laughs> not lying. Dude, save you all kinds of time. You don't have to have anything to fuck. No, I would have spun it. on it. Really? I, I, yeah. I, and it, it's something I, I need to work on. I, uh, not being involved. If they were doing a documentary on on power, power ninety seven in Winnipeg, and I didn't get a call, I would have I'd, I'd spin on that for weeks, weeks. Why, dude? Because I'm because that's how I'm wired. Because yeah, because because you. Let me just introduce this idea. Because you think of yourself in a certain way, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't. And I know it's not healthy. No, I do lots of unhealthy things. <laughs> and I'm even aware of them while I'm in the middle of practicing them. 
and God love you. I, I like I drinking. Mean, I I appreciate the fact that you're able to negotiate this the way you have. But I'm I'm just being honest with you. I I if I were you, I would have been upset. I actually questioned sending it to you because I I had a feeling Alan didn't include you, and I was like, do I want to upset him because he probably already knows about this? Yeah. And no, I had no idea and don't care. Like I literally don't care. Like I said, it that could is be a very helpful. You know, I, I documentary do, I, I about will, boogers. I will command you on it. I I I, I will. But that, that dude isn't that like seriously. Think about that. Isn't that everybody's problem? They invent it is, issues definitely. they have in their head where they feel like they've been slighted, feel like they've been upset. Like, you know, I watched <laughs> I watched Justin Trudeau roll through Edmonton yesterday. Your boy JT. He's, yeah. JT, the prime minister of this country. JT. Please tell me he's left. He's gone, I right? Think he is. I don't know. Okay, no idea. Good. And um, watched everybody lose their mind because he was in town. Can't believe he's here. What an affront to the people of Alberta. Like people that took it personally that the prime minister was. <laughs> well, and then I, I watch people kind of extrapolate back from that. And they're like, you know what? You're right. It's he, he shit on some people here a couple of years ago and he's never out here and carbon tax. And they give away their shame because they think that their voice matters. They think that they have got this incredible self-importance, right? They, they, they just do. People do. That's why people are so fucked up. They're like, how come no one's listening to me? I'm important. What I'm saying is important. No, it isn't. Everybody's saying the same dumb shit. So I watched Justin Trudeau show up to Edmonton yesterday, which, by the way, was very, very funny, and announced that he was going to give the city of Edmonton a whole bunch of money for housing. Cheap housing. <laughs> which really upset the Alberta government because they're, they've been trying to tell people, oh, he hates you. He hates you. He hates you. I can't believe he's here. I can't believe he's here. But again, that same selfish reaction of like, I'm going to give away all my shame over something that has nothing to do with me and I can't control, like nothing to do with me. But I can tell you this, watching videos of him smiling as people were swearing at him in and out of buildings made me laugh my ass off. <laughs> like the laugh thing, my ass off. The thing that I think needs to happen with, 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 with Justin, and, th and this is, this is. I think he needs to to walk away. I don't think he should run in the next election. I because you know what? I got to tell you something. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't disagree with it. And and, and not and because listen, I think he's a terrible person. Like people make him out to be a dictator. I don't think he's randomly. a terrible person. I think it's just like I, dude, you, I you, for the good of the country, you should probably take a walk. Yeah, <laughs> I think we've reached sort of a fever pitch of 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 hatred for the man. Like. He went into A and W the other day in Edmonton. No, just casually, just walked in, and he tweeted about the the new spicy whatever sliders that they have. Uh huh. And he is effectively damaging the business of A and W because now there's a bunch of people in Canada that hate him so much they're not going to. Now A and W had no choice in the matter. Yeah, but do but you people understand are how fucking people, insane that is? It is, like, but I'm you telling like you, guy enough that you're going to say no to a team burger. Have you had a fucking team burger? They're recently? awesome. They're I incredible. But but listen, people are boycotting the things that he is doing. Yeah, because they hate stupid. him so much. Yeah, but those are stupid. Dean, it doesn't this matter. Is my point. This is my point about it control. Matter. It totally matters, and I'll tell you why. No, no, I, it, it matters. It matters that those people are so fucking stupid. I don't stupid. know if They're I've like, ever seen this kind of hatred for, me neither. for, a, for a politician. Never. And I'm Never. not suggesting that the... Repl I'm more concerned about... Um, I'm just as concerned. I shouldn't say more. I am just as concerned about a continuation of the liberal NDP coalition as I am of PP and the conservatives getting into power. I, I'm very bothered. I read a story about PP wanting he's gonna he's gonna stop you from watching Pornhub. You, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to verify your. Yeah, did you see that? Did you see. That? <laughs> I didn't need another reason not to vote for PP. Oh, yeah, that, saying, it, it, dude, you're we're in trouble. You, to your point, we've got a guy who everybody hates. They'll boycott restaurants that he goes to, chain restaurants across the country. They hate him so much. And the guy that they want in there, the same people that are boycotting A and W, are is the guy that's like, make I'm going to driver's I'm gonna license in watching porn. And everybody's like, yeah, all right, we still. Who like do I you. vote for? <laughs> I am so conflicted right now. 
We're so no, he needs fun. to walk away. He needs to walk away. I think what ends up happening is we we live in a country um, where we don't really stand up for ourselves. Okay, we spend all our time in the garage with our buddies, yelling about politics. No one actually does anything, right? And listen, I'm not suggest I'm not suggesting we should be out flipping cars and 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 burning buildings down, but we do kind of just take it and our public officials know it and they just, they keep just giving it to us. If, if it's not carbon tax, it's a booze tax. It's the, it's just constant. It's nonstop. And what we do is we just get matter and matter and matter in our own little circles. And then we put signs up on our vehicles and then yeah, we, we waste a weekend showing up to protests and then we drive to Ottawa and waste three weeks. No, 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 no. That, that, that was weird. That was, yeah. that was a unique situation. I'm talking about typical Canadian behavior. Oh, okay. So then we get mad and we get, we rush out to the polls and then we make a huge mistake and we vote the guy that shouldn't be in power in just to get rid of the guy that we can't stand anymore. Mm -hmm. And and, and, and I, it's just not a healthy cycle that we're in politically. And I don't know what the answer is. I, I mean, I don't think the NDP is, we are a two party system here in Canada. Unfortunately, whether you like it or not, we, we just are, I'm, I, I have a very strong opinion about voting. Like I have to vote. I can't not vote. You know, but can, let me ask you something. Hold on. Let me just finish my point. All right. The point being, you have one. I did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. It may get, it's a little lost now. Okay, it's but, behind. It's in there somewhere. You'll but the, just if Justin Trudeau can't do anything, it doesn't matter Nothing. what he does. Yeah. Dean, every time we bring up something even remotely controversial, People will text in and immediately blame Justin. Tr and they're not kidding that there's no humor at the end of that. No, that text. Dude, I know people who have broken up over one spouse's support of Justin Trudeau. I know people. I'm not. He's got to walk away. This is how fucking. No, it's not him, though. We're He's got to. No, but it's not him. We're a sick people, man. We are sick fucks. We are. And we've been made sicker by a host of things. Pandemic extreme yeah. fire hoses of propaganda disinformation by the likes of rebel news, Canada, proud Facebook, Fox news, Breitbart. Like we've literally, literally, I mean, we go back and forth with this whole thing, whether we're just sick them. fucking people. And you know, you add general malaise for a dude who's been in power for eight years and really only been acting like a prime minister for two, maybe uh, you throw inflation into the mix which by the way went down again yesterday 2.9 percent the lowest by far in the g7 nation group um like it, fucking unbelievable news employment news through the roof yesterday as well in canada canada is great canada is a great country but and and we're in unbelievable shape are things expensive is it hard to buy a house yeah that's provincial and regional it's according to speculation it's got nothing to do with federal so you can literally go down the line yes, you it, can does. Look it at has a lot to do with federal federal taxes are no out of control. They no, are but no, no federal tax. Well, I'm talking about home ownership. Hang on, hang on. I'm talking about home ownership. Federal taxes are the same that they have been since pre Justin Trudeau, which was Stephen Harper. Is the only thing he added was the carbon is tax. Done nothing to control big business in this country. If anything, he's flamed the fires. Uh, they oh, don't. And that part has been so performative to your point. Let's bring the grocery people in here. Let's give them a good ear. So Let's all, give them an ear. All they've done is just upset make them. It look like we don't give a shit. As soon as they yeah. leave, they just go jack prices because they're mad. Yeah, you don't, but, you don't sit billionaires down and, 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 no, and embarrass them in front but of the let country. Me, let me just, just, just to reiterate your point. To your point, was that performative? Yeah, the, the grocery stores, the inflation, the oligopoly in this country brought everybody before the Senate. You need to make things cheaper. Then they put float a story that's like, we're asking other grocery stores from other countries to come in here and quote on having cheaper grocery stores across Canada because of the oligarchy in this country. That was a report two weeks ago that came out. So th just as an example, while that's going on, on the conservative side, right, with Pierre Polyev, Jenny Byrne, their group, They've been telling Justin Trudeau that groceries are their responsibility. You need to make it cheaper. What they don't tell people is that Jenny Byrne, his right-hand woman and campaign manager, 
is currently getting paid to lobby on behalf of Loblaws. That Mo- that Mo- Melissa Lance, you're not telling Deputy me Bates anything. Is new. Currently getting They're paid all bad. to lobby on behalf of Walmart. They're so all I'm, bad. Totally. But, I'm, but what we're I'm not going to whitewash gonna, the liberals' involvement in where we're at right no, now. But I'm saying, you, if you're going to bring that up, you got to bring both things up. You got to bring all of these people up and all their relationships. Listen, let's zoom out again for everybody. Okay. You cannot look at political parties in this country like they want you to look at them, like they are public servants. That is a lie. That's a lie. They are each other's servants for elites in this country and certain business people. Absolutely. Right? That's all and the they liberals are. are probably more egregious at it than the conservatives. They're who knows? We could, yeah. we could do a sliding scale. I'm trying to make things equal so that we're not fucking pinning anybody today. I, I need you to look at this from a macroeconomic business perspective, because that is why the gloves are off. That is why we're being forced to fight each other in a culture war and not a class war. Because the Liberal Party is a 200-year-old business. The Conservative Party is a 200-year-old business. Mm-hmm. And those businesses exist at the pleasure and employ strategies and tactics at the pleasure a big money. of the people that fund them. Yeah, Conservatives have a, a giant group of corporate vendors that give them money so that they can affect policy and change and give them government contracts so we can give them our money. They can give them our money. And the liberals do the exact fucking same. So Absolutely. everything in the middle here, everything in the middle, whether it's policy, whether it's taxes, whether it's a, a cultural issue, is a distraction. It is a strategy. It is not real. The they create only problems. Thing they, totally. They totally. create problems and then they try to fix them to make themselves look like heroes. That's 100%. been an ongoing strategy for years. They do it locally too. It's unbelievable to see it. That's politics. Like literally, they will release a story here, in, and, and every city does this now. It's like yeah. a playbook. They'll release a story going, we got bad news. Your taxes, your house tax, your, your property taxes are going to go up 7% this year. And we're blaming the last administration. They didn't do enough to actually put enough money in the coffers, so we got to cover it, right? Everyone goes, what, 7%? What are you talking about? It hasn't gone up 7% in 35 years. You guys are crazy. And then they come back two weeks later after everybody's in a fever pitch mm-hmm. and they go, you know what? We heard you. We're going to only raise it 4.5%, which is still a record increase. But now everyone's like, oh, they're so good. That's great. Good for you. Thank you, guys. Yeah, it's strategy, dude. Like that same and, thing and, with people that and sell they all houses. do it. Every yeah. single one of them, of them. does it. I and, them. And, and again, it's not lost on me. And some are better at hiding it than others. Mm-hmm. The, the the gigs up on the liberals, though. That's that's kind of the point that I'm making. Oh, dude, listen, we are the Iraq about- can scandal. I mean, I, I mean, sure. they yeah. sidestep these things, and that we're gonna it, sixty it, million. It, yeah, fucking call it like you see it. That four person company got how many dozens of of contracts without no any. Idea. With that, with, they didn't do any work to actually. No idea, but find I, 100%. You're 100% right. The liberals cooked the arrive scam thing. They cooked it, just like the provincial government in in Ontario cooks the green belt and yeah. cooks PPE. Same thing with Saskatchewan. Same thing with Alberta. Who got the Tylenol contract? That the Turkish Tylenol contract. UCP friends. That's who, yeah. dude. That's what every, and here's the thing. It's very incestuous. The whole here's time. the thing is if you and I, right, we have different opinions on things, but generally we're in the same spot. If you and I. We find our way there. Fire, yeah, it takes a while. If you and I caught fire and decided to say, hey, everybody, we're going to point out the criminality on both sides. It's because they're going to use these things to point the fingers at each other. But mm-hmm. we're going to point the criminality out on both sides. And you're going to be able to see it in real time. You should have a problem with the industry of politics. You should have a problem with that. Everybody should. Not the issues they send into the industry of politics to force people to fight. Fuck those things. It's quite Fuck mad. It's quite easy to to easy. to get distracted by being angry at something. Holy. And I'm trying, I'm trying not to do that. And I'm not and very good at it yet. Here's the thing. Those distractions are money-making opportunities for people, too, because they'll be like, Help us fight the transgender woke ideology thing. Donate here. Same thing with the liberals. Help us push back against hate. Donate here. No, these are two businesses that are engaged in a 
in a in a guerrilla marketing campaign to frustrate you and me into fighting each other so that they can have the perception of one guy being a leader, the other guy being in the lead, so they can get access to your bank card for their friends. That's all this is. Finished. Done. Well Hope you understand it all. Now, you should look at every fucking argumentative idea and distraction that is made to do make you do two things, right? Retweet something or donate. And you should, every time you see it, you should say the same thing. This mm -hmm. is a distraction. That's bait. I'm not falling for it. That's good That's advice, actually. Do. But the real victim here is Alan Lulu, the spokesperson for a and I mean, he's he not going to get really another hard. gig. The he's not going to get it. You're talking yeah. about a little bulk. He's so cute, isn't he? He's like a cute guy. So like, I just, I would eat a chubby burger for him if it meant he could keep that job. I'll have a pop. Think about him. Alan. Think Everybody, about Alan today, too. when you leave this podcast and you go about your business, think about Alan. Yeah. It wasn't his fault that Justin Trudeau decided to show up at an AW in Ottawa. No. Because he was a little growly after a little peckish house session in the house. Poor fucking Alan. I know. Uh, who's going to do those commercials standing by giant loonies asking people if they know how much their coffee is today? Not Alan. He just lost his job because you people won't go to A&W. I always love those right commercials now. because I'm like, you couldn't get away with that in any other province. No. <laughs> Great to see you, dude. Thanks for doing this. It was a good run. Are we today. done? Yeah. Hey, can I make a, uh, can I make a suggestion quickly? Yeah, for sure. Please. Um, if you get a chance, it was Chris Farley's 60th. It would have been his 60th birthday last week. If you get a chance, I think it's on Hulu. I mean, if I don't know to get a hands on. If you get a chance, go watch I Am Chris Farley. Oh, it's brilliant. Oh, my God. I Such a nice guy. Such he was a party. So... Just the light. Everybody loved him. He was that big. Hadley Bear, kind of Belushi guy that everybody Dude, loved. Dude, I'd never watched it. We, we we played a bunch of clips on the anniversary of his of his death mm -hmm. on the show. We were just we were getting people to call in and yeah, and, yeah. and bring up their favorite memories. There was some some of it wasn't didn't translate to to radio, but we played quite a bit of audio that morning. I think we for about an hour and a half we played like Chris Farley clips set from Saturday Night Live, from Black Sheep, from Tommy Boy. Um, Tommy Boy is still one of my all time favorites too. Yeah. No and you know what? It was kind of a box office bomb, but it's turned yeah, it into a cult classic. Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, Grant, my co-host on the locker room brought up the, the documentary and I'm like, I've, I've never heard of it. And it didn't come out that long ago. It, oh, that's it, awesome. It, it's so worth tracking down. If you get a minute, watch it. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, I died just finished watching it last night. Did you know that? Do you know he died in Toronto? He had a girlfriend in was did he have a Canadian friend? Like uh, he was here filming something. He was in Toronto filming something. I believe he was at the Royal York, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure that's where he died. Partied very hard the night before with a number of people. I think a couple okay. of them were women. I don't know if he had a girlfriend that lived in Toronto at all. He had, I know he he had a lot a of female acquaintances. I, sure I don't know how how um he liked the ladies. I like that. He liked the ladies, but I don't yeah. think he was I don't think he was had a lot of re like really close relationships. Apparently, he was a really lonely, uh, a lonely kid. Right? Yeah, yeah, thirty yeah, three. Man. Yeah, hard to believe. Hard I didn't believe it's been that hard. long ago. Would have been 60, 27 years. He's been dead. Yeah. Fuck, we're old. We're getting old, man. Too much. I loved him. Yeah, I still do. I, I, when he was Fearless on, comedian. I, yeah. Wait, you know what I remember him most from? Mm. David Letterman. Oh yeah, where he came on and had that really awkward appearance, and he was like, so he was nervous. on a couple of times he was doing cartwheels on the way down. <laughs> he was oh my side. god, he was so good, and it just the and cute. He was cute too. The way the he the, made, the made, made made like aggressive, cute somehow. That's that's the, that was the brilliance of him in my mind. But the joy he brought to Dave, because Dave Dave was pretty close to the chest, right? Yeah, yeah. Like he was pretty stoic, and I mean, every once in a while, you get somebody would crack him up, but. You you could tell he loved he loved Chris Farley. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah, R.I.P. Uh, thanks for doing that. Good to see you, buddy. I am Chris Farley. Go find it. It's brilliant, Doc. All right, take care, brother.
You bet. Lock and cross 957 Cruise FM in Edmonton. At 957 Cruise FM in uh, on Twitter, anywhere you get your fine podcasts as well. You can download his podcast. He's the host of The Locker Room. They do a weekly morning radio show. It's actually a very, very good show. It's kind of the last good rock and roll show in the country. Uh, so go and download. You can listen to him every single morning, weekday live, the host of The Locker Room with Grant and Jimmy. Uh, thanks, everybody, for being part of the show. Thank you to our friends at Fact Check for making this possible. Listen, um, there's a reason we talk about the things we talk about. It's because we live in a society where people are told some things that are not true and they get activated and do things to other people that are bad. Uh, really proud to have partnered with factcheck.io. Do you believe? That's the question they will continue to ask people and they'll get you to ask it by inserting whatever you want into their software. And it will give you the full epistemology of any social media report, any social media post, any news, any fact, anytime you are questioning anything that you read, factcheck.io will be your best friend. They are accepting beta testers now. Go to factcheck.io. Again, sign up at factcheck.io for your chance to beta test the most comprehensive news, information, video, picture, social media, URL software on the planet. These guys are very, very, very tucked in. I tried the demo last week. Oh, my God. There are some newspaper reporters. And there are some social media platforms that uh, do not want anything to do with this. And I can tell you that already. Because it is going to bury confusion. And it will give you agency back. So go to factcheck.io. Sign up for the beta test today. Again, factcheck.io. Follow them on social media. And sign up for the beta test at factcheck.io today. Again, factcheck.io. It's spelt different, though. F-A-K-T-C-H-E-K.io. F-A-K-T-C-H-E-K.io. Thanks to our friends at uh, Cantor for making this possible, too. Listen, my friend Colin owns the most incredible metal tool fabrication plant on the planet. These guys manufacture rugged, hardworking torque wrenches for heavy industry around the world. Canada's leading industrial tool experts, giving you the very best in sales service, rental calibration, maintenance, and custom fabrication of industrial torque tools in the planet. They've been doing it for over 20 years. Doesn't matter what it is. Honestly, top of the line, torque and tension tools, flange maintenance systems, impact sockets, tool rentals, calibration services, repairs, and, of course, custom fabrication is what they do. They've also got distribution opportunities. Can Torque offers a complete range of services and products, making them your one-stop destination for all your bolting needs, saving you time, effort, and hassle. Nuclear, railroad, heavy machinery, uh, forestry industry. If you have a bolting solution, you can't find a solution for these people. Make it right here in Canada, proudly Canadian, manufactured in Canada, designed in Canada. Everything is Canadian. That's why I love them. they got a little maple leaf on all their products as well. Go to cantork.com, brand new website today. Also, Muse Massage Spa. Had another lovely meeting with these ladies. They're redefining the space. Uh, so make sure you check them out. New website coming on March 1st, musemassagespa.com. And if you go to their website, you can check out all of their muses, their treatments, their schedule, their location. You can become a muse and you can ask questions. They've also got a great podcast called Muse on the Mic. Muse on the Mic podcast is uh, takes you behind the scenes of women who operate a very reputable body house in the beautiful city of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. That would be Muse Massage Spa, 1290 Finch Avenue West. They talk about their daily doings. They talk about the girls, sex work advocates, and educators and sexologists. Uh, it's a healthy industry. These are healthy women and they're entrepreneurs and they are about as advocate as you can get for the industry and their podcast is outstanding. Muse on the mic, download it anywhere you get your fine podcast today. And of course, brought to you by Gitch, number one underwear in the world. That's what I say. This is the number one underwear on the planet. Gitch3 is your promo code. Uh, go to edsfineimports.com. Order a pair today. Engineered for any level of performance. These boxer briefs are outstanding. they got this incredible pouch in the front. Everything is housed. Moisture wicking. There is no smell. Super soft. Barely there fabric. Again, any performance you can think of, these underwear can handle. If you're going to go play basketball, if you're going to go to a, uh, the opera, if you're going to run around with your kids all day, dude, I just wear these in a t-shirt to bed all the time because everything is in, tucked in, beautifully done. So make sure you go to Ed's Fine Imports today. Order a pair of Gitch. In fact, if you order three, he'll give you a free pair with Gitch3. That is your promo code. Again, Gitch3 is your promo code. 15% off. Check out. You give them your email address, your entire order. Massive online store as well for edsfineimports.com. So check them out today. Thanks, Gitch. Thanks, Fact Check. Thanks, Muse. Thanks to my friends at Cantork. Thank you for spending time with us. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.
Don't forget, rate, subscribe, everything you do, crier.co. Again, YouTube, Crier Media, Dean Blundell Show on YouTube. Dean Blundell, anywhere you get your social media, I got to go. Bye, everybody. Bye.